All right. Well, we're sitting here with David Hoyne, right? Uh, <laughs> owner of Kitty Hoyne's Restaurant in yep. downtown Syracuse. Um, and you we were just saying you've been in business coming on 22nd year. Yep. So it's a huge, huge, uh, that's, it's a big deal. I mean, to have a restaurant, any business, especially a restaurant that's open for that many years. Um, I'm sure most people would say successfully. I don't know how you feel if you're, if, if that's successfully or not, but you're still there. So that's, that's pretty good. Yep. Um, you know, everybody has their own idea of what success is. Sure. And uh, that's a huge, that's a very big deal in this town, especially. I mean, with how many restaurants open and close every single day, uh, especially now, but to have a place that's been open and established and so loved in this community is a very big deal. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we got to thank our customers, obviously, you know, without them, we don't have anything, you know, so we're just happy that doors are open, lights are on still, you know, right in the middle of COVID here as we get down to into December. So yeah. it's, uh, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, this is just such a great community. I think, you know, uh, growing up in a small, in a small town back in Ireland, I think builds that sense for you. Mm-hmm. So, um, my family, Cindy's family are, are very much so community orientated and everything else. And I just feel that if you're solid on that, well, then I think people will continue if you have a good, quality product, you know, um, off, you know, good offerings and change maybe with the times, but not necessarily, you know, go fully into that. You have to stay true to who you are. And I think, you know, that's the genuine hospitality. I think of Kitty Hoynes, you know, it's named after my mom. So even though she is above, I mean, I always think of her, you know, yeah. and Cindy's parents also, because, you know, Without them, we we wouldn't have had this opportunity either. So, mm-hmm. yeah, w- you know, we have been lucky. We're we're a pub restaurant, I suppose, and an Irish pub restaurant, which is probably, you know, people's idea of food. And uh, it's like it's probably just you know basic stuff, whatever mm-hmm. you know. So we always fight that battle. Mm-hmm. Um, but our chef Damien has been with us for came six months after we opened. Wow, still with us, mm-hmm. you know. He has raised his family here, does a great job for us. So our food is a big, is a big part of us, you know, we're maybe half and half. And, you know, through these times, obviously it's tough, tough in the COVID world to compete carry out wise, especially, you know, it's, uh, you know, fish and chips doesn't travel the greatest. <laughs> <laughs> so we're almost waiting for the person to come do the fish, box it and Tell them to eat it as quick as they can. But it, it's it's uh, one of our biggest selling items. But, um, yeah, but it's a matter of just, uh, you know, Syracuse is a great community. So th- that's why we are, we, are, we are still here. Yeah. We do get involved in as many things as we possibly can, help out as many people as we possibly can. Yeah, I mean, the charity work that Kitty Hoynes is known for participating in and with uh, in Syracuse, I mean, you have the St. Bolter Dicks um, yep. uh, uh, fundraiser every single year. And, I mean, I mean, you guys raise tens of thousands of dollars for that. Yeah, I think we're almost over $5 million, uh, Well, wow. the uh, Syracuse area is wow. through uh, Kitty Hoynes. I mean, even uh, this year we were supposed to have our event. Don't, don't uh, get me on the right date, March 26th, 27th. Obviously, every, every, everything was shut down. And yeah. The community still raised over three hundred thousand dollars through wow. uh, Kitty Hoynes St. Baldrick's. So wow, wow, wow! Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. So it's so it's items like that that just mm-hmm. astound me. It was a it was a novel idea fourteen years ago about shaving heads and <laughs> raising raising money to find a cure for children's cancer, and mm. it just took off. You know? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So um, the re- restaurant almost twenty two years. Yep. What made you want to open up a Irish pub slash sure. restaurant in Syracuse? I guess I got to go back to home, you know. Um, grew up in Ireland, obviously. Uh, left in 1985 when I was 22. Moved over to Washington, D.C. Hmm. Um, we didn't have a have a restaurant back home, but we had a small family-run business. It was a town of 1,500 people. Hmm. So it was a hardware store, grocery, 
bar and undertaking business. <laughs> so it was a little bit of everything <laughs> awesome. from start to finish. And, you know, uh, customer service, obviously, you know, I grew up, you know, I am the youngest of five boys. Yeah. The uh, kitchen table was just a hub of everyone worked worked in the business. So, mm. you know, the conversations went went wherever. Mm -hmm. So from an early age, it was about customer service. So I think that certainly stands to me, you know. Did your parents open that business or was it? They, they did. Uh, actually, my dad's father actually opened the business. Tragically, he died. The, the first shop was burned down in 1950. My, mm -hmm. my grandfather, who I actually never met, died in, in the fire. Oh, and wow. then they rebuilt it. Mm -hmm. And um, out, of, out of that business also, my dad's brother started, uh, was the first one in Ireland to manufacture oil oil fired radiators oh wow uh he mm. was the first one on that so entrepreneurship was certainly within the Hoyne family mm. and uh yeah and and then my brother started off their own businesses also you know from uh plumbing supplies to logistics mm. different things so there was a lot going on <laughs> <laughs> some you know some days like we were kind of a one-stop shopping type of thing mm -hmm. and um you know, my first pint of Guinness wasn't wasn't a great experience for me <laughs> pouring it because I think I poured about half half a head and half kind of <laughs> the black stuff, and the customer wasn't too nice about it, saying, "What the hell is this?" And I just ran out from behind the bar. So, <laughs> but luckily enough, I I uh, survived. You know, yeah, that's great. But uh, yeah, named after my mom, Kitty Hoynes. Obviously, she was Catherine, but yeah, uh, Kitty. So that stuck, and mm. well. Both of my parents and and Cindy's parents have certainly taught us a lot about running a business and different things. About, yeah. You know, polite, mm. generous, yeah. all all of these different things. Yeah, I'd imagine when you're in a small town like that, it's it's not so much um, maybe a thought of needing to have great customer service as much as it is just being a good neighbor. Exactly, exactly. And you know, you got to understand. You know, you need to know. Who is this this uh, person, Anthony? You know, mm. where is he coming from? What does he do? Yeah. What kind of a family does he have? So you kind of learn that at an early age too about you know, hey, it's not, it's about getting to know your customer. Yeah. You know, and um, and then obviously you know the, the business kind of we are ten miles outside a bigger city, mm. Kil Kilkenny. So it was, you know, next thing business started falling off, falling off type of thing. And uh, hmm. eventually I moved with a friend of mine to uh, D.C. in 85 and went to work at the Dubliner restaurant. So just up the street here is uh, Coleman's. It was actually Peter Coleman's brother, Danny, that owns the Dubliner. Really? Down there, yeah, right. Hmm. It's a block off of uh, Union Station right on Capitol Hill. Okay. And started off uh, there at the very low end and worked my way through, you know, and... Um, fantastic experience down there worked there for 10 years mm. and um loved it you know you had every everything from speaker tip o'neill it was governor clinton back then <laughs> and everyone kind of came came out came out through that place so it mm. was a wonderful experience and i just fell in love with the restaurant business i guess yeah wow um i mean that's kind of that's got to be a big move to leave the family and yep. you know go from a uh, town of 1,500 people to Washington, D.C. Yeah, I was young at the time, obviously wanted to travel. Um, did you think you'd stay? or did you? No, I didn't. Like, came out in in uh, September and said, well, might as well give it a go till uh, Christmas, you know. <laughs> so here I am. <laughs> obviously, meeting meeting my wife, Cindy, had a lot to do with that. Met her after a year. So mm -hmm. uh, we got married then in um, in. Uh, 91 and we actually moved moved back to ireland for a year so it was great for her to uh, mm. see where i grew up and everything else and uh, yeah and then I, I actually didn't 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 settle down in ireland plus the irish economy wasn't doing yeah. very well back then so came back out mm. back yeah. out to dc so that was the early 90s that was the early 90s yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. but yeah. uh ireland has since gone on and flourished and having a tough time right now, obviously yeah. just like any other yeah. other country, but um, mm. they will get through it as well. <laughs> so do you still have family, siblings? That so are I have I have my four older brothers are there. So uh, two of them have retired. 
Yeah. And two of them are working, one in the logistics business and the other is in the uh, tiles and plumbing. Oh, wow. So, uh, yeah. we, but, 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 but we talk and Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and uh, so that's fun. And then most of their kids have actually come and worked at Kitty Hoynes, which is, okay. oh, wow. which is good for the summertime as well, you know. Yeah. When, you, when they could come and kind of do that on their uh, vacation visa type of thing. But yeah. now it's a lot tougher. But um, oh, okay. I think there's only only one of them that actually hasn't. Okay. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, mm. yeah so family is big for us, obviously. And uh, Cindy's family is big as well. So yeah, it was uh, – and that that's how we kind of run our uh, business as well. It is a family-owned, family-run. Yeah. And we feel that our staff are family with us as well. That's great. Some people, they don't get it, you know, but – they they figure figure that out after a while if it's not a good fit for them you know but yeah it is like a family for sure yeah it's that's really important i'm seeing that a lot more and you kind of see those restaurants especially with everything going on that have those kind of roots established for their staff um i mean i work for a restaurant in town that i mean they've had staff that have been with them for 20 30 years and um it's pretty amazing i'm in like the group text with everybody Right. It's pretty, nice. yeah, yeah. It's amazing to see all of them just connect and yeah. know everything about the other's family and all that kind of stuff. It's, yeah. it's pretty wild to see. Even even more so now, COVID times, for sure. You know, you, you just value value ev- everything. You, you know, you value a job. You value your life, you know, your freedoms, everything, you know. So it, it, it's, it's – and then without somebody being actually – beside you helping you or looking out looking out for them yeah you know it, it, it's it has brought it home i think a lot more that you know people are the most valuable commodity right now yeah for sure it was um it feels really different now than it did during quarantine you know during quarantine it was uh you know i work my you know the nine to five as you know is at gearhar so yep. we were never really um a hundred percent shut down there was only maybe two or three weeks that I was working from home. Uh, mm-hmm. The rest of the time I was in the office. But during those two or three weeks, you know, I kept uh, my wife and I really connected a lot better. You know, we were doing more home projects and cooking a lot more. And uh, we actually got chickens. So you know, nice. now we have some backyard chickens, right. uh, which are starting to get annoying. But uh, <laughs> um, and during quarantine, I was like, you know, this is this is pretty nice. I don't have yeah. to run around to eight different restaurants every single day and worry about this post or that post. And I was like, you know, coming out of quarantine, that's what I'm going to, I'm going to slow down more. Yeah. I'm going to yep. <laughs> put less on my plate. Yeah, certainly. And I don't know whether we had this on the pre-recording or not mm-hmm. here, but you know, people's bucket, bucket lists. I mean, yeah, I think they have gotten closer to home now. Yeah. You know, that it's not, that it's not going on a European uh, trip, but it's actually mm-hmm. about, about my family, I I need to do this for him or her, yeah, type of thing, you know. Plus, plus our time that we just use it, yeah, use it better, yeah. Habits have been formed certainly during this whole quarantine and shutdown and different things. So it's it, it's uh, how we how we come out of it. I think we will be stronger mm-hmm. for sure, yeah. you know. But um, we'll just have to wait and see, I guess. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of questions I have to ask uh, you about all of that in the okay. restaurant. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that are popping. We don't have head. enough time. <laughs> I know. Um, so, uh, but I want to. I want to try and follow the history. So you're so in the early '90s, uh, married back to Ireland yep. for a year, and yep. then you. Now you were living in Washington D.C. That's where you. That's met right. Yeah. Yep. And is that where you were living when you decided to go back to Ireland? Yes. For that year? Yep. Yep. So moved straight to D.C. Lived in Virginia, Alexandria, just over the um, Potomac. Yeah, I was and gonna say my father, my parents were in Fairfax. Okay, yeah, uh, they were there earlier. They would have left by by then. So dad, my dad ran um, the first ever franchised Pizzeria Uno in uh, Fairfax for no about a year. He was he was a part owner in it actually, and then they, geez, my brother was born in eighty one, so they they may have left in like eighty three. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. It just came a little bit after that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, and then they went to Kentucky. And then DC has changed some. Like DC used to be the murder murder capital yeah. of the states, you know, and it's 
totally different nowadays. But that's one of the reasons why they got why they out let, of there is yeah, dad had been robbed like three or four times at that restaurant. Wow. And so, you know, wow. they, they decided to sell the shares and, and get out. Yep. Um, yeah. 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 DC used to Came be a back really up rough here. place. Yeah. yeah. And now it's just, uh, well, now it's just beautiful. They have invested so much in the downtown. Yeah area and different things plus it's a smaller city too mm-hmm. plus it changes every yeah every right. four years almost <laughs> just you know two two years even with you know yeah with the whole federal government and political scene you know it it does change a lot but mm-hmm. it was great we loved it i did end up also working for a friend like worked at the governor for uh, 10 years mm-hmm. and then um then went to falls church and worked uh, opened the place with a uh friend of mine who uh, used to be the general manager actually at the Dubliner. Oh, okay. And uh, worked there for four years before then finally coming up here. But funnily enough, you know, I learned quite a lot at the uh, Dubliner. Mm -hmm. I think the number right now is roughly people that have worked at the Dubliner have gone on to open up their own places, 35 Mm. of them. Wow. Wow. It's either 35, 36, 37, somewhere right, wow. right there. So mm. it was a great place to learn the yeah. restaurant business. And mm. you have to credit the ownership, Danny uh, Coleman, for that. You mm. know, Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, very is that, much so. Is the restaurant still open? Oh, it is down there, yes. Yeah. Yes, his uh, kids are running it now. Mm. They've expanded just a little bit. And um, it's a institution. I think it opened 1975. Yeah, had a shooting there the first day for whatever reason. <laughs> so it was, it could only get better after yeah, that. Yeah, for sure. But you know, it has hosted presidents. It's you know wow. uh, part of the Phoenix Park Hotel. Oh wow! As well there, and um, you know, fantastic place. So is that where you met your wife? That is, yeah, okay. yeah. Hired her on on the phone. Uh, she had filled out an application. She was down. She was looking <laughs> to move uh, down to Washington D.C. and uh, yeah. Yeah, the rest is history. So <laughs> it was great. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. then from Ireland, I'm assuming that you moved straight to Syracuse? Uh, when we came back? Yeah, when you came back. 90, no, back to D.C. Okay. All right. Back to D.C., yeah. Got married in 91, like came in 85, worked in D.C., moved back in 91 to Ireland. Okay. Lasted just under a year. Yeah. Back over to D.C. and then out to uh, Falls Church just at the end. And okay. Back up here then in July of 99. Gotcha. Okay. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, opening a restaurant is tough enough, but if you don't have family with you, it's even harder. Yeah. So that was the biggest thing for us mm. was to move to Syracuse, have Cindy's family available, whether it's yeah. babysitting <laughs> or <laughs> living at their parents' house for six months, you know, yeah. no rent that, you know, it, it's definitely, you know, it's 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 a tough under undertaking. Yeah, you know you got to put everything you can into it, and then some. Yeah, my parents owned a uh, dad's owned a few restaurants or been partner in a few restaurants over the years, and um, his first one was in uh, Syracuse on West Tennessee Street called um, oh wow, Grimlow's Diner was the name of okay. when he bought it. Yeah, and that was back in like. He graduated West Hill in the seven in 1970, so I would say that was probably like 75 to 77 okay. somewhere in there. Okay. And uh, he named it Bobby T's after that. And then, uh, but when I was a kid, they had a 50 style diner in Kentucky where we lived, and uh, had it just over a year before they closed up shop. But you're right; it was every the family extended yep. family. Um, where it was, you know, me as a kid, I was like 11, 12, I was homeschooled, quote right, unquote, right, at the time, right. which just meant that that year of my homeschooling, I learned how to <laughs> live in a restaurant. Yeah. Um, but it was all hands on deck all the time. Right. You right. know, holidays. I yep. mean, you know, I remember coloring Easter eggs in the kitchen with my mom and, you know, at the restaurant, right. you know, and there was a short break one day and, you know, just stuff like that. Yeah. It's, yeah. you're all in. Sure. Absolutely. And then some, and even during uh, COVID here, you know, when we had to lay off our staff and different things and then hired them back, obviously, or as many as we, as we could. Um, just last weekend, we were kind of, you know, we had a certain amount of people. It, it was our first Saturday night, say, back to takeout only. Mm. 
And, you know, we kind of went on Friday night. Well, Friday night probably going to be the same as Saturday night. Well, it wasn't. So uh, yeah. we got our everything <laughs> handed to us and then some. Uh, so so the phone call went out, you know, yeah. hey, send help. <laughs> so family came, of course, you know. So yeah. that's it's good. fantastic. Yeah. 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 Um, and that's what's so hard to take about our business or our industry right now. Yeah. You know, independent restaurants, they are families, you know, uh, that, and, and even if that family member doesn't work in the restaurant, mm-hmm. they are still dependent on it. Yeah. And it's, 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 and it's ruining just families, mm-hmm. you know, whether it's their health or their wealth, you know, it, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a huge battle. Yeah. yeah. But restaurants, is a battle every day, whether it's a broken toilet or a refrigerator that's not working or a staff member doesn't show up or, Mm -hmm. you know, different things. We are continually used to putting out fires. And I think that's why Mm -hmm. there are not as many restaurants that have just either given up and are closed up. Yeah. Because it's just that fight that's in them. Yeah. You know, that I'm doing this for my staff. I'm doing it for where I live, for my neighborhood and different things Mm -hmm. it's you know i i i think it's taken lightly yeah what they do but Mm. it's um it's it's without a doubt i mean to even say it's kind of silly it's like it's the hardest time that anyone has ever endured i mean i'm sure that there's people alive you know that have you know i mean my my mamaw god rest her soul just passed away this summer but I mean, she was alive during the Great Depression, you know. Right, right. Um, but this is just, uh, I talked to so many owners, that, you know, every single day yep. that are, it's just, it's unbearable for them. And the hardest part is that there, it, there is no playbook. There's no answer. Right. There's no, there's, there isn't anybody out there that says, I figured it out and this is how you can succeed or this is how you can do well. Yep. Um, the only thing that I've seen that is doing well right now is, the new places. Yep. You know, there's three of them that have popped up in the last month who are just going gangbusters. Yep. And, um, you know, so when I kind of figure like, you know, quarantine was kind of a different story. I don't know if it was for you, for you guys at Kitty Hoynes, but quarantine for, um, some restaurants was a different story because people, especially in the early days, and they're still saying it now, but in the early days of quarantine, everyone was saying, we have to support the yep. local restaurants. They're going to go under. We have to get out there and support them. And so we had that combined with people like it was a, you know, pretty much well, for us it was a statewide quarantine. Right. Uh, so people were stuck. There was nothing that they could go do except for like go to a park, right, or go out to eat. There was n- mall wasn't open. Nothing was open. Yep. And they had more money coming in. I mean, they either had less expenses or, you know, if they were on unemployment, they were hopefully getting more money than they were used to. So everybody was spending money going out to eat. Yep. All, almost all of my clients were saying that they were making more money than they had ever made before in the history of the restaurant. And some of them have been open like 35, 40 years. Right, right. Um, it's not the case right now. No, it's not. No, it's very, it's very much separated now. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously... City of Syracuse is an orange zone, parts of Salve, parts of Lysander, I think. Can't remember yeah. where else, but, you know, orange zone, you know, it's only outside and carry out. Then right. you have a yellow zone that can be a half a mile from your quarter mile yeah. from your where it is in indoor dining. So, yeah, it, it's that is a tough one, I think, right now. And to your point, too, you know, there was a rally cry back yeah. in March. You know, let's get out there, support, support, you know. Yeah. We have been lucky with our customers. As I said, we have fantastic customers. I mean, we had we ha- we have five tables outside. I never really wanted to wanted to put them out there. Mm-hmm. But I said, you know what? It's it's kind of well, maybe it's just a message that says, Hey, yeah, we're open. I don't care if it snows on them, whatever else, we're <laughs> gonna put them out every day, you know. Guess what? People came. Hey, do you have a heater and different things like that? That's you know. Great. So it, it, it's people have been wonderful. Yeah. Just so, just so good. Um, and we'll see. You know, it's 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 uh, the restaurants. You know, it, it's it's sad. Really, downtown is tough too. Obviously, uh, just because we we uh, depend on the office business as well during the day. 
yeah. it's, it's gone pretty much for now. Mm-hmm. People working from home and different things. But, uh, you know, we can, we can, you know, hide and cry about it. But I am on a text chain with uh, Bud yeah. there, you know, and uh, there's maybe 20 restaurants on there. People having a hard time. There's new owners. There's people that uh, that that have been around for thirty years, just like you said. Yeah. And it's a different set of circumstances for uh, everybody, but nobody wants to give up. And right. I think all of us kind of help help uh, one another. Mm-hmm. I have a little battle battle cry that I threw out last week. It's it's D T F O. Drive the F on. <laughs> And it's just, you know, should I go left? Should I go, should I go uh, right? Should I not be in business? Just, just drive the F on, you yeah. know, we, we don't have anything else. We don't have any government help, federal help. Yeah. No one is advocating for us right now. Right. It's yeah. a little, it's, it's a little not enough and it's too late now that people are getting on there, you know? Yeah. Um, however, we can. We need to help whoever's out there, you know, <laughs> but it's, it, it, it's a little too, uh, too, uh, late, but yet, you know, as I said, we have to fight on, you yeah. know, we have to fight on, you know, we need to get through winter time, get to spring again. Yeah. I think vaccine, obviously you'll, there is, there is light at the end of the tunnel and it's not yeah. a train. Yeah. You know, <laughs> right. It's good. Yeah. It's good. I mean, nobody knows. I mean, I was thinking back to, um, late February, early March, somewhat, well, it had to have been March because it was the day that the St. Patrick's Day parade was supposed yep. to happen. And I was sitting in here recording a podcast with Tyler from Nostalgia Chocolate. And um, we were talking about it. It was like, listen, in two weeks, it'll be over. Yep. <laughs> you know, we'll I be, know, right? We'll be good. You must have been drinking good stuff that, <laughs> that day. <laughs> I mean, I left. That, we left that podcast and went over to Peak's Coffee together and right. sat there with like, uh, I th- there was a picture that we took of like six or seven different business owners that all just happened to, happened be, to there. be there. Yeah. And we all, my family you know, loves, loves, uh, going there. Yeah. Yeah. We all like had Great our spot. arms around each other and took a picture and made the post. And yeah, yeah, you know, that's right. That's right. Yeah. You yeah. know, I mean, back then, like I remember one or two comments of you shouldn't be doing that. And back then it was like, you're crazy. Right. Right. Yeah. And here we are today. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, it's, it is, uh, it's really challenging and like even hearing you talk about everything and me sitting here thinking just being the person that I am, my immediate thought goes to, all right, what would I do? What would I do? What yeah, would I do? Yeah. Yeah. Um, like what, what would, you know, uh, and I can't say that I would like for some, like, uh, if I have a marketing client, I'm like, we need to start doing more videos. We need to do this. We need to do that. We need to change our menu up. We need, yep. And I hope that you never do any of those things because right. Kitty Hoynes is Kitty Hoynes. <laughs> well, that's it. And, and, you know, we have had the, we have lost an awful lot, just like Ron, Ron at, Ron at Shifties yeah. was quoted in the uh, paper just last week. Yeah. You know, the heart and soul of uh, Shifties was, you know, the live music. Yeah. People right. congregating together, you know. Uh, it's the same at Kitty Hoynes type of thing. You know, music was big for us, you know, live music. Obviously, our bar is yeah. a big uh, part of our business, and it's and it's pretty much gone, you know. Yeah. But so you have to pivot, which is the great word, you know, or you have to change, you know. You have to, you have to try and sell, I guess, whatever you can to whoever you can these yeah. days. You know, you look at Eden, mm-hmm. you know, what they actually uh, did. You know, you just yeah. look at, you know, different restaurants around, which is – which I think, you know, competition, I think, is great, yeah. you know. And if you were just going along, going along, running your business, and maybe somebody new didn't open up or somebody didn't have this idea, mm-hmm. you would just sit back and think nothing was wrong or, right. you know, accept what it is. But yeah. every every restaurant helps everybody else right now, you know. And yeah. that's part of that text chain, part of my neighbors down in uh, Armory as well. Mm-hmm you know, great neighbors down there and you yeah. look and see what they're doing, you know, and it's, yeah, it is great. It's a great industry to be in. Maybe, maybe not the greatest model <laughs> right now, but again, everything changes, you know, as I said, we need to keep driving on as best we can, you know? Yeah. Certain places 
they might pause for a little while and that's understandable, especially with January coming, you know? Yeah. I don't know. You know, I, I, um, it's one thing for somebody who's been in it for a long, I mean, it's, it's not just, you don't have to have been in it for a long time. It's such a difficult industry to be in, whether you've been doing it for a year or 50, that, um, it's beyond understandable to want to get out. You know, during quarantine, I've said this a couple of times, but during quarantine, I, I bought a, uh, um, I bought a, a, p- a stone, pizza yep, stone. I've right? seen you. Yeah. 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 I think broke Good after stuff. like the first time. Is that you know, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. And so I bought the baking steel and, you know, I even had the founder, like the inventor of that on the podcast and. So I was really trying to get good at making pizza. Yep. And um, we don't want you to do that. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. I never got good. Don't worry. Um, uh, but um, I would post the pictures on my Instagram and we had this family friend that would always say, she'd always comment and she would say, this looks amazing. You should open a restaurant. And she would say, cause you know, my, my grandfather and, um, uh, my papa, which is my, that's our hillbilly version of grandpa. Right. So my mom's dad, um, uh, papa was a uh, German, Irish, Scottish, and something else. And nice uh, mix going yeah, on there. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. And then my dad, <laughs> lots a, of good and bad. <laughs> I know my dad's Italian and Sicilian. So yeah. I always said I had the meanest, uh, meanest <laughs> ones in my blood. Um, but, uh, Papa, when he was, uh, they lived in Covington, Kentucky, which is just over the border from Cincinnati. Right. And so, uh, Papa's dad had a bar called Burkhart's back in the day. And, um, it's that, you know, my Papa was a really astounding baseball player and he had a special tryout. I'm probably butchering the story, but he had a special tryout to play for the Cincinnati Reds. Nice. And, uh, so it was that good. Somebody scouted him and said, we want to bring you in, you know, and, um, his uh his father wouldn't let him go to the tryout because he was the only one in the family that was big enough and strong enough to carry the kegs from the basement up to behind <laughs> no the bar. Kidding. And he, wow. so his dad said, if, if things go well, what are we going to do? You know, <laughs> if you make the team. Yes. <laughs> sort of a thing. Wow. So, a great story. Yeah. So this friend would always say uh, on Instagram, it's in yeah. your blood. Right. And it would always piss me off because I'm thinking like, I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. Like I work for people in the industry. Like I know that like it is everything. Yes, it is. You're it's all in. And then some, uh, would I want my daughter or son to be in this business? I think I would honestly probably have to say no. Mm. Cause I just see what it, you know, how much time and, you know, we are lucky well, right now we're open Tuesday through through uh, Saturday. Normal normal times we were open Monday through Saturday, mm-hmm. so we were always closed Sunday, apart from a couple yeah. of different things. That's how the previous Crown Crown Bar was. That's how downtown was. There wasn't any Marriott Courtyard yeah. ac- across the street from us, and different things. So so we kept on that model, and I think that certainly helped family life because really mm-hmm. that that should be number one. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it's, you can't really take time off when you're in the restaurant no, industry. No, 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 you can't. And um, but uh, I mean, it's it's a good life. But you know, yeah. would I want my kids to go into it? I think no. <laughs> find find uh, some something different. But I love it. You know, I yeah. I just love. Some days I things are going going bad. Maybe you're back in the office looking at something, or back in the kitchen, whatever else. And it's like, oh, you know, the world is falling apart. Yeah. But then once you go go out and chat with somebody, customer at a, a table or, and or at the bar. Yeah. It's like it's a whole different world, mm-hmm. you know. So that that whole people interaction just boosts, boosts your day, you know. It's about mm. you might be their only good experience that day. Mm-hmm. Could have had a hard, hard, hard day at home before they went to work, terrible work day, and maybe they stop off at Kitty Hoynes and, if we can give them just a little bit of, yeah, hey, I mean something in this world. It's like, oh, okay, you know, people people spoke uh, actually to me, said uh, hello to me. You know, mm-hmm. we often talk to our new uh, to our new staff about hospitality. That it can't just be within the four walls. Like you need to be walking down the street and say hi to a to a stranger. Yeah, you know, because that that might be their only time for somebody to talk to them that day. Yeah. 
you know so it's 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 um for that for that kind of nugget there i think restaurants stand out you know yeah it doesn't sound like that's something that you picked up in an entrepreneur book or how to run a restaurant 101 it was just something that's kind of like in your it's who you are it, definitely uh, and i i attribute that to to my parents and my and my older brothers obviously you know that i saw you know mm. um you can be taught something but if you can catch something like see actually people doing it well then i think it just resonates an awful lot more and yeah both, both of us grew up in that kind of environment so i think it was easy to actually do it you know i mean w- we are offering a uh, experience it's not far irish food irish pub is not far everybody but yeah. we hope that enough people do like it you know and it, it it's that that is what we tell our tell our staff uh to this not yes service is very important but it's the hospitality component that is that makes the difference yeah because you're not going to walk into Kitty Hoynes and no matter how bad of a day you've had, hear you uh, yelling at the staff or anything. No, no. And there are, you know, there are some spots that you're going to go into and you're going to, you know, yep. you're going to hear that. That's what they make coolers for. <laughs> so you can walk in there, shut the door, and <laughs> let it go, you know. Yeah. I do have my moments, but I, uh, you know, yeah. you know, things kind of get to you. Yeah. As I said, you know, last week I got angry for, for just listening to something and just thinking about, you know, moving forward here and, mm. and and I didn't let the staff see it, but yeah. they knew I was quiet and different things, but uh, you know, you just can't. I mean, you know, because all your staff they uh take their cues from you. Yeah. You know, it it's important to start off once they walk in that door that, you know, they are with you. We have an unbreakable spirit. We're gonna get through this. You know that hey, you know Kitty Hoynes wants to continue to be open and different things, and it, it it's uh, it, it's we have a great team because of that. You know, mm-hmm. uh, ex- excluding uh, the world of COVID nineteen. Yep. What's been the biggest challenge for you over the last twenty one years? Ooh, that's an interesting question. <laughs> I mean, I you know I just think I mean that's a long yep, and there's not many places that can do that and keep things. I mean things need to stay kind of traditional for Kitty Hoynes. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we have had, I mean, we have been, sorry. And, and, and it's a challenge. You said, what is the biggest challenge? And I was going to go, uh, go out the other way on that, but, um, Oh boy. Um, I suppose having just, just having the right people, like just, just with our own business, you know, People come for a couple of years or maybe five years and then they kind of move on, you know, which is understandable. Either they're at college, mm-hmm. they are, you know, you know, studying to be something and this is a fill-in job for them. So kind of losing a certain amount of your core staff is certainly a big one, you know, that is a biggest challenge. But I think the actual restaurant model itself yeah. is getting harder to operate especially apart, not even in, uh, before COVID even, whether it's, uh, you you know, we have trouble ahead even too, you know, about you can only pay a certain amount of wages for your, for your staff. I would much prefer, I think, to pay everybody the same Mm -hmm. almost and then divvy up whatever the tips were. But obviously New York state law doesn't allow you Mm. to take care of back of the house that way, even Mm. though people are, working maybe twice as hard back there yeah you know so that model i think is unfair yeah. myself right now but we have seen that danny myers and different people go to no zero tipping and increasing menu uh prices yeah. etc but it seems like he has even gone back on that as well mm. um yeah that's that's so, a tough one so the model is kind of really 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 tough right now i mean yeah. the average profit in the restaurant is five to ten percent yeah you know i had a, a restaurant on the podcast about three months ago and we were talking about uh it was the, the, the like the three owners and in it we were talking about how the industry hasn't restaurant industry hasn't raised and uh, raised their prices the way that they should have yeah and yeah. i thought that was a great idea like it is a great idea like there are still places that you can go and get food for far too cheap here in town. Yes. 
Um, and so we were, we had them on the podcast and we said that. And, uh, two weeks later, my wife and I went there for dinner and <laughs> walked out and I was like, how much was dinner? <laughs> I know. I know that is, that is really tough yeah. right now. Yes. Yes. And that's a well, that's a well taken point. And, you know, maybe you have to make that hard actual decision and raise your prices and mm-hmm. you, you will lose people. You know, but everything is just costing so much money now. Yeah. Take, for example, right now, and this was a shocker, but I think we were paying for a case of latex gloves, maybe. (laughs) Let's say there was 10 boxes of 100, so 1,000 gloves. So so 10 boxes, I think maybe about $4 a box. So that was a $40 case. Mm -hmm. It's now $170. Yeah. It just doesn't make sense, the actual price gouging and different things. Yeah. And even, you know, certain certain other food items, you know, whether it's chicken sometimes and different things. I mean, it's just, yeah, yeah. yeah. Everything is definitely costing more. Yeah, the fluctuating prices and, yep. I mean, I work with a pizzeria and just hearing like the prices in chicken wings, you know, I think yep. it was Joe Crab from OIP was saying, you know, it, it's earlier during all of this, he was saying it, at some point you're going to have to charge a fair market price. Right. And just right. you can't put a dollar amount on your menu for chicken wings because it keeps going up and down and up and yep. down. Yep. And um, yeah, there's so many things. Yeah. So many things um, that have changed in this industry in the, this year. Yep. And it's it is it's kind of impossible to operate uh, certain styles. Well, that's why, Anthony, right now that I feel so bad because we are regulated from and. And I always look on those regulators as partners because if you don't Mm -hmm. straight away, you're going to kind of, it's not going to work out good for you. So whether it's your own local health department, Mm -hmm. they actually help you to open up, you know. Um, It's the fire department. It's uh, city codes. It's the state liquor authority. It's the labor department. Like there are so many entities and so many different things that restaurants have done yeah. To protect as many people dur- during this. We are nine months here to the day, I think, today. Yeah. And thankfully, we have had zero cases ourselves. That's great. You know, but that's, you know, but I just feel that, that you know, restaurants, um, they're not getting a fair whack, mm-hmm. you know, and it's going to be tough to recover from it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. As to how many hoops we have to jump through. Mm-hmm. We want to do that. We are in partners with them. We don't want to be giving food uh, poisoning to somebody. You know, that's not, we're not here for that. Right. You know, so it is a partnership and we do as many things as we possibly can to make it a safe place. Yeah. Every restaurant does. Mm-hmm. Pe- yeah. People will, will find out those, those ones that don't. You know, yeah. I mean, there are times where things just go bad, and I, but I don't think anybody goes in, wakes up one day, an owner, a cook, or anybody, and says, "Today, I'm going to deliberately do something that's right. going to hurt," you know, a customer. Yeah. Um, Steve Samuels and I were talking about that. You know, it's you. You can't have a bad day in this industry. No, no. Especially no. if you're in the kitchen. <laughs> well, exactly. <laughs> yes, yes, and you know, sometimes it happens. You know, sometimes you know. Oh, we only had 10 customers today. The next the next day you have 210 and you got to be able to, you know, sometimes it doesn't work out that way. Sometimes it just all comes together. It's, you know, but yeah. But if you're screwing up, you got to get out there and hey, say hello, yeah. you know, <laughs> apologies and you know, I I mean it is it is easier it is so hard to find customers. Yeah. The ones that are there in front of you, if you can do the best job you can yeah. on keeping them coming back and maybe their friends coming back, mm-hmm. you know, you are better off to invest in that yeah. than try to, you know, <laughs> go out there and try to market and different things, you know. You have to do that, yes, right, but, yeah. you know, that person that is here tonight that maybe has the overcooked steak, well, guess what? <laughs> We're going to buy you buy you dinner tonight, you know. <laughs> Apologies. Yeah. We ha- you know, something happened back there. Yeah. But you also cannot offer any excuses. Yeah. They don't want to hear that. So, again, we're, I'm going to ask this question pre-COVID, but um, what has been the biggest or, if you know, what's something that you recognize that's changed a lot from, you know, year one to year 20? Um, I think people, 
people are more foodie now. Mm-hmm. They've expanded their whole food horizon, you know. Yeah. That's the beauty about Armory Square. You can pretty much eat at Anything. 20 different places and not get the same food. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. Syracuse for that matter. Right? Yeah. Um, but so I think people, people expect more mm-hmm. from you. I yeah. feel now from year, let's say year actual one to now. You know, they want a better experience. You know, they certainly want things, seems like quicker. Mm-hmm. I think we're all in this world where we can go to our phone and yeah. I want it now. I need it now. Yeah. I, I love and hate that. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. I, yeah. yeah. Dinner yeah. should be a time of sitting down and relaxing and, you yeah. know, turn the TV off and the phone off. You yeah. Know? Um, yeah. I, I, I mean, I'm part of that problem as well. I mean, you know, Target just started um, uh, same-day delivery. Yep. I mean, I ordered something at Target today at 9 a.m., and it was delivered to me at 12. Wow. I mean, and it didn't cost me anything. Yep. And then Amazon coming. Yeah. And Amazon is the same way. I ordered something yesterday that was delivered this morning. Yep. From an Amazon truck. Wow. Like, I've noticed that in Syracuse. I've seen yes. Amazon box trucks now yep. uh, with their employees. So. Yep. Um, I love that, that that exists for us, and I also hate it because I know that it's just making things worse and worse. It's making us right. more into ourselves, and I have to have it now, and it has to be perfect, yep. and I'm going to throw a fit unless, it, unless, you know, and if it's not perfect. And, right. Um, you know, it's, it's thinking that we're more important than we are, right. and I am – Without a doubt, one of the yep. uh, worst case scenarios for Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Well, we we, are, we do kind of live in a throwaway world too. You know, I got to get the new model. I got to get you know whatever yeah. it is. You know, yeah, right, yeah. I remember going back to my parents' time, and you were talking about your grandparents. You know, after my mom died, we were clearing out the kitchen uh, cupboards and things. You know, there was like tins of vegetables and our fruit peaches especially, that actually had a hole in them just from the acid, like they were in the back and, you know, teacups with actual chips out of them. Nothing, she never threw threw anything away, yeah. you know, because that's how they, like, yeah, almost the same as now type of thing, you know, mm. certainly not the same, but the same kind of idea that your actual daughter needs to go further now. Yeah. You know, you value, I feel, definitely as a restaurant owner like you value Mm -hmm. what that dollar is or how much waste you have and different things you know yeah um but yeah uh, i i also feel amazon is great i feel with a thousand workers new uh, people um however it's going to be a tough a tough battle for us especially back at a house again yeah competing with the hourly wages and the that nice air conditioned i know brand new environment but you know guess what we have to get we have to go along with it you know and make the most of it yeah we need it here in in, uh syracuse you know we need to get Mm -hmm. somewhat bigger here yeah yeah and it's it's challenging for me thinking about the with everything that's going on with covid and how um how much restaurants are suffering right now um it's challenging for me to think about like in one way it's going to sound terrible, but I know that the this hard time is going to usher in a new era of uh, creativity in you know most areas of life. Yep, not just in Syracuse, but especially uh, you know loving this city and this community and wanting to see it grow and thrive. You know, I know that's going to be the case here. I was on the phone because uh, you know we expanded to New York State, so connecting right. now with restaurant owners across the state. Um, there was a, a place down in somewhere in the Hudson Valley and um, I was on the phone with the owner uh, it's like a dessert place. And she was saying her husband uh, owns a restaurant group in New York city. And um, he's like, uh, he was working on Robert De Niro's new restaurant when I was spoke with her earlier yes. this year. So she said, I'd love to connect you guys. And so I jumped on a zoom call with him and he was asking me about Syracuse and when we launched in July to the state, I started now all of a sudden just on Instagram 
branching out and following places in Rochester and Albany right. and Buffalo and New York City and seeing what's out there. And I was blown away at how advanced the restaurants in Buffalo and Rochester are. Not yep. all of them, but right. yep. a lot of them, yep. you know, compared to our new hip scene. Yep. And, um, and so he was asking me about Syracuse. And I said, Syracuse is about 10 years behind Buffalo. And uh, he's, I said, I did say behind Buffalo. Right. And, right. He was, and he was like, and I'm in New York, so that's like 25 <laughs> years behind us. Right, right. Um, so there are just things. I mean, we listen, we just got a barcade yep. <laughs> during COVID. Absolutely. And, you know, they couldn't even open, right, yep. uh, because of COVID reasons. Right. That's not a Syracuse knock. But um, <laughs> so part of me knows that, you know, I, I've, for the last two years before any of this, so, you know, two years ago, three years ago, I've been saying, which not just because I watched um, uh, the big short too many times, um, a recession is coming. Like I was asking restaurant owners on the podcast for a bit, like, what are we do? Like, what are you doing to prepare for that? Um, and knowing that something we were going to hit a bottom and it's going to suck. Right. But then that's going to make room for new creative places to pop up. Yep. Or maybe it's a, the same restaurant that's cr- figured out a different way to do it. Right. Um, and so I know that's going to happen with us. I mean, there isn't going to be a, a, we can't have a continual bailout. Like, you know, we can't have, you know, two a year, um, for everybody to then start spending, get the people to start spending money again. Right. Right. So places are going to have to shut down. It's just, I feel like it's just kind of like the natural cycle. Yeah, I'm sure it is. And maybe those particular places were not, maybe it was looking that way. Yeah. before this and maybe this is a reset type of thing but you know you just don't want to see anybody suffer you don't no. want to see anybody go out for the wrong reasons and different yeah. things you know it's uh yeah Syracuse kind of almost never goes too far forward so we never go too far down it seems mm. like through 2008 yeah different different things going on in my short time here yeah. um you know maybe that helps us a certain amount that we're insulated yeah a little bit we don't want to be, I don't want, you know, cause I want the place <laughs> to grow, you know? Um, and especially with the newer restaurants that are opening, mm-hmm. I mean, I got to put it to three lives, put it to Chelsea's and put it to yeah. the soul place and yeah. tomato opening during a pandemic, you know, and doing very well by the looks of things. You got to hand them an, an awful lot Yeah, right there, you know, and um, everywhere is different. So that's, yeah, that is great. Also, you know, it, it's uh, yeah, but it, it's Buffalo. You look at, you know, you look at Rochester, too, like they have a strong undercurrent mm-hmm. of, you know, whether it's Kodak or Eastman and different things yeah. like there's a lot of there's a big spine there, you yeah. know, to actually yeah. work off. And ours um, is the, Syracuse. You know, yeah, right. it's that has changed an awful lot, you yeah. know, but but, you know, I think speaking as an outsider here. I think sometimes we are our own worst enemy mm-hmm. that we, yeah, no, that'll never work. What an arcade bar, forget it. I mean, you know, what are you thinking? You know, yeah. that's, that's in Buffalo or that's in New York city, you know, well, guess what? You know, <laughs> they're at it and it's going. Yeah. Um, you know, so I think, I, I think from that uh, and our, and our, and our leadership, you know, we just, you know, uh, mm. DTFO that's, yeah. Hey, there are no excuses again. You know, we're back to that type of thing. Let's just move forward here. You yeah. know, you, you, you as an owner do the very best that actually you can be, be a good neighbor. And then hopefully everybody is going to kind of yeah move in that right direction. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Buffalo, Rochester, you know, um, they have had quite a lot of an investment in different things, but I mean, Syracuse will get there. Yeah. You know, you're a hardened crew. We are, you know, and you know, I, th- I think, uh, like you were, uh, when you were just talking, I was just thinking like, we, we have gotten away from knowing who the owners are, you know, yep. it's like, we still Syracuse is, I mean, it, it's, we're obviously not a small town, right? Right. Um, uh, it is amazing how many people I know that are that know, you know that like you're only like what is it two degrees of separation right from right yeah um, and uh, it's so it's amazing how many people I'm I meet that it's like oh you know this person in some yep. way 
Um, you got to be careful who you're talking right, about. Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we're not a huge city, but we still have gotten away from, you know, really knowing the neighbor who owns the place. Yep. You know, and kind of having that connection to them. You yeah. Know? Um, you know, like my wife is from a town called Boonville. Uh-huh. Uh, which is an hour and a half away and, you know, right at the base of the Adirondacks. Yep. It's a great small town. And her father is um, not, he's not like the veterinarian, but uh, I'm sure at one point there weren't many, but, um, right, right. <laughs> but, but he's a big animal veterinarian up there. And uh, it's a, just such a small place. And I always joke with her, like uh, if we drive past somebody, I'm like, oh, did you know who that was? Because uh, it's such a small town. Yep, yep. But it is nice to be up there and hear her parents and her family talk about how they know most of the people, you know, yep. like the business owners. It's it's not let's go to this place, but they know who it is that's that owns it, that's running it, you know, that's in there cooking the food. Right, and, you right. You know, it's, it's not just this Chinese restaurant, but it's this family. Sure, sure. And I think we need that. I think um, if if we're probably going to actually – and a lot of the places survive and really get our support. Um, I talked to Paul Valenti a lot. Yep. And, um, and especially about everything that's been happening. I feel like we've been talking more. I saw the donut crumbs on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I feel bad when I worked at cafe Kubal, uh, me and my coworkers had a thing called fun Friday. Right. And, uh, and so every Friday morning, I would go and get um, the Philip Friday donuts. Yep. And then I would go to the, over to the Sweet Praxis and get a gluten free baked good for another coworker. Nice. Who, and um, and I was there. I mean, I f- figured it out that year. I worked at Cafe Kubal. I think I spent four thousand dollars just between <laughs> those two places. You will, you will have a Christmas card this year. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, and, uh, luckily working at Gearhars, I haven't been down to Paul's <laughs> right, too right. often. Sorry, Paul. Yeah. Um, but we talk a lot about just like what's happening, you know, I mean, he woke me up Saturday morning when the news, you know, when Dominic's announced that they yep. were going to be shutting down for the time. Yep. And, um, you know, we talk about just like ways, you know, what would we have done? How should, how do we think they should have handled it? That sort of thing. Right. Right. And so I'm trying to figure, I've been tr- really trying to rack my brain, like, it's one thing restaurants don't need to be charities. Um, but um, at the same time now, you know, they need support of the community. And so how do we do that? How do we get the support by and large for locally owned restaurants without a lowering our prices all the time to try and get their attention, <laughs> right? B doing things that are off brand, you know, yep. um, I'm sure you do a great job of it. And I love the video that you did for the Irish coffee season right, last year right. of showing yep. how to make it. Yep. Um, and I mean, this is with no dis- disrespect. I don't want to see you doing a zoom call every week with a cooking video. Right. You know? Right. Like, <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> yeah. Um, cause that's just not, you know, right. I just want it fit. Yep. So what can we do to like get this? And I think that's it. I think it's just reminding people that it's not just, I mean, it is Kitty Hoynes. It's not, uh, it's not the brand, you know, it's not like a chain Irish pub feel restaurant, Yep. yep. but you know, it's the Hoyne family. Yeah. And it's, and it's a little part of Syracuse too. Yeah. You know, uh, just like every restaurant is like every business is, you know, whatever else, you know, and it, it's, it's uh you did uh tell me that that you weren't going to ask me too many hard uh, questions but this <laughs> is the hardest one so far here so um but yeah it, it it's again it's like your neighbor you you just want to help and help and actually support them you know yeah. it, it's independent restaurants bring a different feel to their community i mean we don't have a signature food item here i suppose you know yeah um However, we have lots of signatures here, you know. Yeah. Um, if you take any food group at all, you know, you can, I would put any Italian or any homemade pizza up against any other city around here. Yeah. You know, we have great, great uh, places for them to hang around. And, yeah. you know, to be, to be a city with life in it, mm-hmm. 
you have to have different restaurants and different social scenes and different things, you know, yeah. um, because we don't have 10 Amazons or 10 big, you know, factories that are employing different, different amounts of people. It's a lot of small businesses mm -hmm. that are just working, you know, together and, you know, whether yeah. it's, um, we, we, we buy our goat cheese from, um, oh boy, now I'm going to forget it. Two kids? No, not from two kids. Um, it was on the tip of my tongue. I'm going to interlaken. Come on, why, why can't I think of it, Anthony? Um, oh my goodness. The only one that pops in my head is the, the, the only one that I know of is, uh, there's two kids, to yeah. be honest. So I'm going to take a senior moment here with <laughs> yeah. with, with my I'll, CRS disease. Yeah. Come over, back to that one. I'll overdub. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, like it's not just the restaurant. It's yeah. it, it's the it's the bakery. Yeah. You know, it, it's it's so many different things. It's the farmer. It's, you know, we, we support so many different things. Yeah. And we, in turn, then try to give back to our communities as well. You know, yeah. it is a two-way street. Mm -hmm. You know, how many times do we get asked to support this, that, the other, you know? Yeah. There aren't too many other businesses, I feel, that kind of get asked. But you know what? Yes, yes. <laughs> you know, we do. We want it, know, you know. Yeah. It's, um, but yeah, you you always look, you know, you want to have a strong business community as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and restaurants, I feel, are just a big actual part of that. You know, it's, 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 uh. That's a tough question that you've asked me. <laughs> I wish I had a better answer. <laughs> I really feel like there's got to be, I'm going to think of some campaign that we can do. Yeah. Some, you know, something. Uh, well, you have to keep, you have to keep trying, whether it's the gift cert thing, yeah. whether it's, you know, just putting out different, different things here, you know, yeah. different, different uh, videos and, yeah. you know, taking people's stories and different things, you know, I mean, look at the actual new ones that have opened too. I mean, it's. Yeah. You know, everyone has a story to tell. Right. Back to your name, to your name thing. It's kind of off of a beaten path here. But I often found if ever there was that we had two people that were going to fight in our bar, which <laughs> we've never really had. I think we had one instance and that's it. Wow. We, were, we have been very lucky. Mm -hmm. um, but I often found that if I could come, come upon a situation, I would say, what is your first name? Anthony. Well, Anthony. And I think that that just lowers the whole yeah. vibe straight away that hmm. this is a this is a human this is a human being that I'm actually talking to. Yeah. Hmm. And he wants to know my name, whatever else. And I just found that that was that was a great way, you know. Yeah. And it's like ourselves, restaurant people, hmm. Paulie Messina the same. He yeah. is fantastic about going around to the tables. He yeah. knows people's names, their family, what they're doing. I mean, it, it's hmm. Yeah. That is what actually wins in, in the day, you know? Yeah. Well, what better way to end it than with that? <laughs> there we go. Absolutely. I do have a funny story, too. Yeah. Uh, back in the day, my dad, he was in the under undertaking business, but there was a movie being filmed five miles away. It's called Circle of Friends. Okay. Um, can't, I can't... I can't remember the actors that were in it. Lively Run, by the way, is the go is the uh, oh, go okay. go yeah, cheese. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We have been with them from day one since we've opened. Yeah. Um, but they had a kind of a uh, a um, funeral scene. So he, so we were the closest undertaking business. <laughs> so he gave them a cough a uh, coffin, and there was a scene. It was in the kitchen, <laughs> and uh, they had the corpse in there, or whatever else you know, and. He got the coffin back, so we were, we, we always said he is the only under, undertaker that we know that is selling secondhand coffins. <laughs> <laughs> I I was actually tempted, just you know, talk about talking to Paul there at yeah. uh, Blazed and Confused, um, like we like we do say bar hardware grocery under undertaken right above our bar so i was going to look for like the top five best-selling hardware items <laughs> and then i don't know what i would have to do for the undertaken side but to have kind of a one-stop yeah. shop again that's but awesome yeah, yeah yeah but it's fun but yeah i mean thanks for having me uh you know i love what 
you and Garhart's are doing as well. Yeah, thank you. Um, I think it's great. You know, we need we need more of it, and yeah, always here to help with anything. And uh, you know, we will get get uh, through this. And as you said, I think we will be stronger. Yeah. You know, once we get out of this. Yeah. And uh, hopefully we will look back on it and it'll all seem <laughs> funny. You know, it's a good line from a Bruce Bruce Springsteen fa- yeah. uh, song. But uh, yeah, we just need to DTFO and get it done. Well, thank you, David. You're welcome. Thank you.